everybody. Here we are. We might be drunk. Good to have you. Sam's hung over. Steve-O's sober. And uh, we lost the Peruvian dog. You found that dog in Peru? I did. And uh, I was videoing as I found her. Like, I approached her with the camera rolling. And I just kept filming the whole time I was in Peru. This is where I found her, in the streets of Peru. And... I put together this video about how we fell in love and how I brought her home with me to America. And that fucking video got more views than, <laughs> than anything I've ever put on the internet. It's, that's the internet. It's a slippery bitch. She can't predict it. Yeah, well... You never know. I'll tell you, it was... Uh, that dog's it, a slippery bitch. It, it was, <laughs> ran away from us. It yeah, was, right? It was, it was a real kick in the nuts to learn that after a lifetime of attention whoring... Exactly. I just couldn't come up with a goddamn thing better than rescuing a dog. You put a Hot Wheel car up your ass. <laughs> you know, a couple of views, but this, you can't yeah. beat it. That's Those are the things you think of that pop, though, on like TikTok or, or YouTube. Right. It's like self-harm yeah. or animals, <laughs> right? Those yeah. Are... I mean, anything with animal cats, my girl's into cat yeah. stuff, and that all just blows up. Yeah, my, my girl actually uh, just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls nothing but animals. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Because you know what? There's so much hatred and, and vitriol just being spewed on Twitter and all this shit. Right. And then you see a little cat and you're yes. like, oh, the world's not right. awful. Yeah. Kind of nice for bestiality people because they're like, oh, I'm just, <laughs> uh, I love animals. You know, you have an out. That's kind of convenient. I never thought about that. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fucking fan. <laughs> Bestiality? <laughs> hey, you, you think that does well, just a rescuing a dog. Yeah. Fucking right. a dog. That's oh. going through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys uh, gave me this annoying homework. You know, I have to come up, come up with all this different stuff. I was thinking about how do we, let's do a bit about fucking a dog. <laughs> I tried to write a bit years ago about how we make fun of bestiality people, but we, we talk about women as if they're animals she's a fox she's a hot chick that's a cougar or yeah, if she's wow. ugly that's a dog she's a pig we yeah. always go back to animal right okay mm. russ manevius have a great bit where he said uh what? doggy style that's too kinky for me i like human style that's when i put my dog on his back uh, <laughs> that's great that's a great, great, great little mystery great russell peters <laughs> russ maneve oh okay i was gonna say <laughs> russell peters that doesn't involve a, an ethnic person <laughs> or an accent um yeah, man. So you're in New York just just hanging? Promoting my book. That's right, the oh, book. Uh, yeah, I, I have a book. It's my second book. It's wow. called A Hard Kick in the Nuts. New York Times bestseller. I, I sure hope so. Yeah. I, would be, uh, I would be mortified if it's not, but um, we don't receive official word about that for another uh, presumably a week. Uh -huh. Do you okay. Did you ever think you would write... One book, much less two? I did. I did. I'm such a rabid attention whore and always have been that uh, I kind of just viewed my life as uh, something that I was doing so that it would be a really crazy book. Hell yeah. Wow. You got everything. What I've learned from a lifetime of terrible decisions. Yeah. I love it's that. It's a book of wisdom. Oh, Get on it, folks. Uh, unfortunately, memoir part two, I learned, is not a thing. <laughs> right, so you right. gotta you gotta have some kind of an angle on it. So uh, I went with a book of wisdom gleaned from a lifetime of terrible decisions. Yeah, is, is that part of your sobriety? Is that is what part of my sobriety? The bad decisions. Uh, I have managed to make awful decisions in sobriety. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, for sure. I, I love it. I love a good bad decision. I know, but the sobriety part sucks because you can't blame it on drugs or booze. Right. You know, that's it. You know, like the, the the book has its uh, it's fun, it's funny, and it's serious as well, and and uh, that plays into the serious part that uh, it's a motherfucker when. You're a piece of shit, and you don't have drugs and alcohol to blame. Yeah, yeah. that's hard. Did you, did you do the whole rehab thing, or did you just... Oh, yeah. Oh, you did? I did. I did. Um, it started... The, the sobriety started with a, an intervention, which was uh, organized and led by oh. Johnny Knoxville. Oh. It's the funniest intervention yeah. of all time. <laughs> that, that was one of my first jokes, uh, you know, in stand-up, was... Uh, 
you know you've got a problem when your interventionist is Johnny Knox. Right, right. You walk in, a bucket of water falls on your head. Like, come on, man. We need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, tar and feather you. <laughs> wow. So what, what, what was the drug of choice? Uh, I was uh, what we referred to as a garbage can. Mm. Like, so that's uh, everything? Fairly non-discriminate. I never mm. uh, did heroin, and I never smoked crack. Mm. But other than that, I was uh, indiscriminate. That's never really got into meth, but at the same time, I never turned it down. I <laughs> gotcha. That's pretty good. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of crack head comedians and actors, and then heroin. You never did that. I think you're doing all right. Right. That was what I learned from my first time in rehab in 1995. Oh, you multiple times. Yeah, 1995. I was only 20 years old. I was on a string of bad luck. Yeah. I ended up in rehab totally by mistake. And what I learned in there was, wow, crack is bad. And <laughs> uh, so is heroin. Yeah. David Cross talked about doing crack in his book. And he said, like, he did it once or twice, never did it again. But he gets why it's so popular. He's like, you feel great. I mean, I, I understand it is absolutely delicious. Yeah. <laughs> crack is great. Yeah. Crack is like kind of. No, that's tough. I mean, that's uh, you see people on the street and you're like, well, you're not doing great advertising for crack. Right. right. You know, or meth or whatever. I mean, I don't like drugs where you're just always on the drug. Uh, I like yeah. that moment with hangovers. You're like, I am a piece of shit. Yep. I hate myself. Yeah. Let me text a friend. The dude who's on meth is not waking up the next day like, did I almost rob and rape someone last night? Right. right you don't right. have that moment of clarity. Right. Yeah, you just keep going. Yeah. That's got to be tough. Yeah, I remember uh, that, that first rehab. It, it was always everybody was in a circle sharing their feelings. Yep. And on just about every day, there was somebody who left and somebody who arrived. Mm. And the the arrival entailed walking up to the circle and introducing yourself and stating what your drug of choice was. Okay. And I really quickly got the impression that whenever anybody said their drug of choice was crack, everybody's priority was making sure that that fucking person was not their roommate. Whoa. <laughs> like, wow. Like, I don't just, I don't, they, they would avert eye contact. It's like, I don't want, like. Why know. is that? Because just coming but, off, it was a nightmare? Um, that and uh, just like. I, it's a bad personality just type. Just a bad person that I don't want to have Ugh. to deal with. Mm. You hear that, Tom Sizemore? The piece of shit. He was yeah. a crackhead. Right, and I, and I also, <laughs> I also uh, got the sense that when people's drug of choice was heroin, they didn't walk up to the circle. They were more like kind of carried into the <laughs> into, and then we would meet them in a couple days. <laughs> right, right. They were zombie. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. So it's like the movies with the circle and the. It was the very. Nurse. Uh, at that, at that Did time. you share your feelings even as a 20-year-old? Yeah, I remember then I, I would always introduce myself as, I'm Steve-O, and I'm an alcoholic, or, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> it was. They I knew much, you, though. Yeah. Oh, that's even weirder. Oh, no, no, they didn't know me in 1995. Okay. But I but I was introduced myself as Steve-O. Got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, now, then... now I'm a little bit more... Uh, uh, I, I, I try not to be Steve-O in those circles and in, in the, the recovery community out of respect, I feel like. Sure. Yeah, I you're, sure you're not supposed to use a stage name. Yeah. It's... I'm, I'm the amazing Jonathan. <laughs> 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 I was like, all right. Exactly. <laughs> that's, uh, that's fascinating that you went at such a young age. It, it didn't stick. Yeah. It, it didn't stick back then, uh, if you can believe it. <laughs> it, uh, it was um, when I was 33. That I got sober. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Really fucking good, man. Yeah, congrats. That's the thing. With, that's the thing with addiction is that uh, it's a motherfucker if you just kind of have it. If you're mm. say if you're an alcoholic, but not it's not so bad. Yeah, you know it can continue. Yeah, it just 
it kind of turns into quicksand. It, it just yeah. slows you down. It yeah. fucks up your relationships. It precludes you from like really realizing your potential. Right. But it's not so bad that it needs to be addressed. Exactly. So it just continues and continues, and the years turn into decades. And then the next thing you know, you're an old dude, and you're just fucking sitting there and like, fuck, I blew it. So true. Yeah. When it it eats away at just a little, it's almost right. worse than if you have a rock bottom right. moment. Oh my god, I'm so fortunate that. I had it so goddamn bad. I was just it, like, it was so not okay the way I was carrying on that it had to be addressed. Wow. And so, you know, it's the only disease like where you become a better version of yourself. Any other disease, the best you can hope for is to be restored to the health you enjoyed before you got sick. Right. But when when we treat alcoholism and addiction, we actually become a better version of ourselves than we ever were before. Interesting. It's unique in that way. Because the, you think the gratitude as well? I think the gratitude, I think that uh that um to, you know, it's it's like a spiritual solution. You know, we kind of get plugged in. We, mm. we we make sure we're doing the right thing when nobody's watching. That's like the big deal. What about sex addict? That's Se a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. But I would I would maintain uh, the same thing. If anything, I think uh, the, the sex addict uh, is almost um, almost a heightened example of that because uh because say when you bounce back from the kind of shame and and guilt you know like that that can be associated with sex addiction mm -hmm. then you're coming out of that with like a level of humility and you know right and uh like precision care for doing the right thing when you're yeah. watching right. you know, i think most like, guys think they're a sex addict but then they come and they're like i'm not <laughs> you know like <laughs> i've true. had that thought I'm like maybe i'm addicted to sex but then it's like no of course i mean you were actually but it did, did it go hand in hand with I, the other I, addictions i would said like my life played out at like sort of an addiction whack-a-mole you know a game of whack-a-mole like one you know address one thing and the other thing just rears right, head, you right. know like I, I i had to address the sex stuff um when i was well into sobriety yeah and uh and that was that that was crucial man i mean if you look if you think about it like um as far as like falls from grace you know like just absolute like devastation of people's uh, careers, their reputations, livelihood. Very little competes with sex as far as just taking down huge. Oh, for sure. Huge people. For sure. Yeah. Army Hammer. You yeah. Know? He's yeah. gone. That's a bummer. Yeah. What about food addict is tough too because you yeah. have to eat. You right. don't have to do heroin. You have you know, to eat that, to stay alive. So yeah. that's a bummer. That's where I'm at now. <laughs> The guy, oh, you got food? I, I, like, Come I, on. I'm in and out of the food thing. I'm, dude, I've never uh, appeared to be somebody who's uh, like got a problem with with food. Mm -hmm. But man, uh, sugar's a motherfucker. It really is. I remember when the uh, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie came out. This is, I'm thinking like uh, he's in it. Ah, oh, dude, epic. <laughs> I'm thinking it was like 2019 when it came out. Yeah. Like, um, mm -hmm. I sat in that fucking theater with an entire tub of caramel popcorn <laughs> and a jumbo pack of fucking red vines. And I, I sat there and like took a huge bite of red vines and then <laughs> as I chewed it, like filled my mouth with caramel popcorn oh, to, chew, to chew it all in concert It's like a speedball. <laughs> You're mixing drugs. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I found it to be the most fucking delicious shit I've ever eaten. That's and I good. did not stop until I'd eaten the entire entire tub of wow. popcorn and the whole jumbo pack of red vines and i was like i, I have a problem you know uh, so it's uh, crazy to be watching that guy on screen you'd be like i'm sick <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've got problems phoebe herman's next to you going this guy <laughs> <laughs> He's get his act together. that guy got a bum rap yeah he did our Porn boy theater our boy ronan has a great joke about it we owe him a big apology because he was doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> in, right. in that movie theater right right a hundred percent yeah that's but that i get i mean the sugar addiction like you feel the sugar high sometimes sometimes i'm trying to behave on the road like I'm, mark and i are well-behaved drinkers so that's it is a problem right. mark well is 
I mean, to be fair, let's not characterize you guys as having alcoholism a little bit, mm. right? I mean, you, you, it's sort of either have alcoholism or you don't. Right. And it seems mm. evident to me that you guys are not having problems, uh, you know? It's affecting likes. stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, beat my ex. No. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's all... It's all uh, you know degrees and levels sure, and, I, sure. and I, I think it's it's evident to me that you guys are, are functioning at a very high level and that nothing i was saying about quicksand applies to you guys oh geez i, I definitely heard that and i was like that might be yeah <laughs> I, I, I had a late night la- and i'm definitely one of those people that like my friend texts me he's like that was so fun last night and i was like i was fucking wasted and then he was like you were Oh. Like he couldn't, and I'm like, oh, that's not good. Well, that's not good. Better than you were there. <laughs> that's a bad I one. wasn't like, I was, I was, I just not like I blacked out, but I was like, oh, I was drunk. Right. Sure. Whoa, yeah. shit. Where were you? I didn't see you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see you. Around. I canceled spots. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I need a night off. Yeah, I get it. We I mean, work. I've been hit, I've been burning the road hard. Mm-hmm. We yeah. we go hard on the road. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was hearing. I was hearing that like five different spots a night. Yeah. At a certain point, it's not even helping though. At a certain point, oh, you're like, what are we not. doing? Yeah. Definitely tough. not. I mean, I believe strongly in doing some 10, 10 minute spots when I'm putting a show together. Yeah. You know, like right now, I'm in the in the swing of a tour. The last fucking thing I wanted is to do, you know, small sets at a low. You know, like I'm not hurting for stage time at all. I'm fucking touring my dick off. Yeah. And uh, soon enough, I will be, um, you know, putting together the chunks of of the next hour. Nice, and, uh, man. You're you're burning the midnight oil. You got a hot sauce, a book, a podcast, and you're on the road, and you have a, a dog. Yep. Killing the butthole it. destroyer hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my, my new and hotter version of Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole. I just put a drip of it on my wrap, and it Smells kicks. really good. Check out the top three ingredients. Ooh, here we go. Fentanyl. <laughs> Amphetamine. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> well, the th- and the chili peppers. Wow. That's- <laughs> oh, damn. Good band. Uh, scorpion. Yeah, the top three ingredients are the three hottest peppers in the world. What? Carolina, Carolina Maga, Reaper. Maga. Maga. It's, it's a Naga Jiloka, which up I Maga think is uh, the technical term for ghost pepper. Oh, really? Wow. And Carolina Reaper chili. Reaper. Ooh. Carolina Reaper is the hottest. So this will fuck you up. It's designed to fuck you up. Yeah, it, it was hot. I put a dab and it. Dude, there's it, this it, guy it, named Johnny Scoville on the internet. Oh, I know Scoville. He fucking chugs a, uh, an entire goddamn bottle of that shit. Chugs the whole thing, and he's just sitting there chilling. Unreal. That's fucking spicy. It's, it's really spicy, that yeah. Is really, it's good. It's really yeah. good. Well, thank you. A dash on your eggs might be nice. Very and, good. Yeah. I mean, spicy. it's like whenever I'm out of the original Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole, yeah. that's the only time I use this shit. <laughs> and when I use this shit, I'm so careful to pour tiny drops. Oh, yeah. What about the, uh, have you done hot ones? I have. I've done it a couple times. That guy can take some heat. Uh-oh. He can. He can. Okay. Oh, okay. He can. I, uh. You think you're tougher? I don't think I'm tougher. Um, I do think that they are a little bit. Um, they, they they could go hotter on that show. Oh, really? Do. Really? I, I do believe that's the case. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I, love, I love that fucking guy, Sean Evans. Yeah, great, great interview. I love that. Great show. I love that fucking guy. I love that show. To this day, my most viewed interview I've ever done, I believe, is my first hot ones. Oh, nice. It's amazing how everyone tries to come up with these crazy ideas, and then you're like, we eat hot wings. That's the and show. Talk. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's amazing, too, how the format endures. You would think that yeah. it would be, like, kind of get played out. You know, like, they they just do the same fucking thing. And, and uh... Well, we like seeing people in weird... Like, it's fun seeing Paul Rudd, like, oh, God, I'm dying here, you know? Because you never get to see... They're always cool right. as a cucumber. So it's, it's vulnerable. Right. It's a yeah. vulnerable thing. Right. But... I remember my first time on there, I was, like, so determined. I knew it had a huge audience. I knew yeah. that Kevin Hart had done it before me. I knew that, like, <laughs> I was like, man, I'm going to be talking to a lot of people when I do this interview. And, like, I was just belligerently refusing to let the heat of the wings yeah. preclude me from communicating effectively. Hell yeah. I fought through it. And, and just, bah. 
Yeah. And then after I was done, I went and took a piss in some bushes, and my dick was on fucking fire. <laughs> That's, yeah, because you, you yeah, touched the wings, was, right? Oh, right? Yeah. You got to dip it in oat milk or something, right? I mean, my dick was burning like a motherfucker uh, because I took a piss in some bushes after. <laughs> You're like, the chlamydia's back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> What is I'm fascinated by the sex addiction. That what is like rock bottom with a sex addiction look like? Mm. Oh man. Do you fuck a cantaloupe and you're like, I can't keep doing that. Like, what do you like, <laughs> what is it? If that's the case, I'm I'm going to rehab tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've fucked every object in my home as a child. <laughs> you guys didn't do that? The couch? Yeah, I did it. All right. Oh, I mean it sister, you know like, grandma would come over, you're like, Don't sit there, don't sit there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It uh I mean it depends, man. In general, like the I would say the definition of addiction is when uh you continue a behavior despite there being serious consequences for mm. the behavior. And uh, you know, in with sex addiction, I think more often than not, the consequences are just generally shame. You oh. know, like you uh, you are ashamed of yourself, and and you, you just hate the way it feels, and you keep doing it anyway. You know, Damn. like my particular pattern, uh, you know, was was involved like really pouring on the charm to get like a, a woman really into me and then yeah. like sort of you know acting out sexually and then losing interest in ghosting you know yes. it's just this like Been there. it was this terrible uh, kind of sociopathic pattern of just like routinely harming people right that, uh, that, that it just made me feel like the fucking worst piece of shit ever especially when they're like hey what are you doing you're like oh I'm done with you already right yeah right, for sure and you know and like the the constant anxiety of like the the health risks associated sure with them, that's fucked up we, too. you weren't wearing a condom either I was, I was really pretty damn good about it about yeah. about you know acting out sexually were you more scared of way. STDs or knocking someone up um, I was way more scared of STDs uh, than I would agree. someone up. You can get rid of a baby. <laughs> yeah, you can't get rid of herpes. <laughs> Some of those states, it's a little harder. That's true. That's, That's a tougher true. phone call in Missouri than, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. But, but, but there were exceptions, man. Yeah. You know, there, there was, you know, there, there, there's one particularly horrifying story that I recount in, in my new book. Which I'm super reluctant to share right now because my fiance is sitting over oh, here. Oh, hello! But um, but you know, and, and I had told this the same story on Mark Maron's What the Fuck podcast like years ago. Okay. And um, and and all of a sudden I just had this fucking panic attack and reached out to the producers of Mark Maron's podcast saying, please, please fucking cut out that, that story I told about, about so-and-so. Right. And then I went and put it in the book and what, it, what it was, <laughs> smart was, uh, it, I mean, really, and, and it's, it's basically the answer to the rock bottom question. You know, it, it was, it was one of those exceptions to the rule where I was having unprotected sex and, um, it, it was uh, a, a situation where um, I, I had, uh, you know, the, 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 this woman I met on tour. We arranged her to fly in. She oh, was like, boy. she was staying with me for like I don't know, like four or five days. Wow! And we, and we were like, there's the exception to the rule, just going and going ahead and having unprotected sex. Yep. And about halfway through the visit, she she just casually tells me that her uh, her last relationship was with a guy whose last relationship was with a guy. And okay. I'm like, oh shit, okay, so now I just landed in the fucking highest possible risk category for oh, HIV. Oh, wow. You know, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like her last partner was a dude who has sex with dudes, which is like, by far and away the highest risk category. I'm freaking the fuck out. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I'm just not okay. I remember, like, as soon as she said this, I was like, oh, I'm, I gotta go walk the dogs. Or, you know, I'm like, fucking walking the dogs. I'm freaking out. I'm, yeah. go I'm Googling yes. the, scariest, the scariest statistics, you know? And when I get back to the apartment, I'm like, well, like, you know, I, 
already did it. <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, might as well and, live with it. Might, well, no, I already did it. I'm, you know, there's no like, might as well do it again. And <laughs> that was that was the moment where I'm like, yeah. what the oh, fuck? Wow. What you know, like, like what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. You know? And I was just like, <laughs> that that was literally. It's literally like you got poison. You're like, I'm gonna finish the dish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 100%. exactly. And I mean, that's that's how fucked up it yeah. was. And that was specifically, I remember, like, I I, I I drove that girl to the airport so that she could fly home. And I went, like, racing to the doctor's office. Like, oh, wow. oh my God, Whoa. like, fucking, I need to be. And, um, and, and it, I, in equal swiftness, reached out to somebody I knew who was in the sex program and was like, dude, like enough is enough, man. I, I, wow. I need fucking help. And that was, uh, that was where the journey began. So how is it living with AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I've, uh, I've been tested, uh, many, many times in the years since that happened and, uh, seem to have gotten away with it. Hell yeah. Yeah. A heist. So it was a, uh, a, uh, not an expensive lesson, right? Or the, a valuable lesson, there you not go. a costly one. Costly. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's uh And then and there we have it. My girl is sitting over there now like uh the the the, the scary part of the book that she's afraid to read. <laughs> she doesn't have to read it. She's heard it now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> Oh, I oh, did? You were drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've told that story before. How about that? I did not know that. I honestly thought that you were hearing that for the first time. There you go. Yeah. Okay. How about that? I got points for being considerate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a t addiction is tough, man. I mean, it, it, you tell that story, and I'm like, oh man, that's uh, like I I feel the shame. Like I understand how you, the fear. Right. And, I mean, it's got to be crazy. You walking into like a clinic though, and they're like, is that fucking Steve-O? <laughs> right. yeah. Do you have that moment where they're like, that's fucking the dude from Jackass? Yeah, I mean, I remember. Uh, I remember the, the like what the really weirdly like the the one doctor that uh, it, there were a couple times I went running to this doctor like dude ah you know and, and the doctor is a gastroenterologist who is the the one doctor that I have like a like a, a an ongoing and regular relationship with because I have a, a an esophageal condition mm. called Barrett's esophagus. Okay. Which is legitimately scary. It, it um, it's often uh, like develops into like esophageal cancer. And so like, it's kind of a precursor to esophageal cancer and as such needs to be like really closely monitored. Mm -hmm. So I get what's called endoscopies yeah. where they put a camera down and check it out. It's since become a stable condition. It's not like it, they're like, oh, you're good. You oh, know? good. Like no more endoscopy. It's not yearly endoscopy anymore. Now it's like, we'll check in three years. So that's good news. But yeah, when, when like my, my, my freak out over uh, STD scares sent me running to the gastroenterologist and uh, it's not the kind of like office where it's like, Oh, I saw Steve-O at that place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that, I assume that's esophagus. And is that smoking caused or just um, for hereditary? I, I do, you know what? I don't fucking know. I'm not, I think, uh, I, I do know that acid reflux is a big contributor yes, to it. Yes, exactly. My friend has it. He has cobblestone throat, Joe. Mm. And uh, he can't have spicy food. He can't have caffeine. He can't have mint. Oh, God. There's all these Damn, things. I just sent him like four cases of this hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could fuck him up. Up. But yeah, my, my years of eating shit. Yeah, damn catches up. I, I'm fascinated because it's like you've lived kind of on the edge for so long in yeah. so many ways. Not just like this stuff, this outside stuff, but your career is kind of on the edge. I mean, and you like, could... do you think they're linked? Do you think like you like it took so, you took such risks in life as a as a professional? Do you think that the sex addiction and the other addiction like mm -hmm. it comes hand in hand? Mm. I don't know. I don't know about that. I like. I, I wouldn't say. Oh, because I'm like. I, I'm. I'm. A, you know, a risk taker in my professional life. It spills over into my personal life. If anything, I would say it was the other way around. You know, nah. I'm just a fucking. You know, loose screw fucking nut job, and and uh, I found a way to make a living at it. Hell yeah, you gotta love showbiz. <laughs> yeah. But here's what I gotta ask. So we like to drink. We like to party. Uh, you're sober, flying straight, beat the sex addiction, beat the booze, beat the drugs. You guys clearly aren't having sex. 
<laughs> is it boring? Are, are you gonna are you gonna make it? I mean, it's uh, it's hard to hang on. I am uh, absolutely fucking psycho about. Um, about work I think is what you know like I just channel it all into uh, trying to accomplish it I'm sure you guys are no different yeah we work a lot but we also play how many many podcasts do you have you said you told me you've got like we got two or three yeah so it's that's I think we work a lot we get stressed out we want to kill ourselves but we also can take the edge off with a nice highball right I mean, I basically just never stop working. You That's know, the that, key, that, that, I guess. That, 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 but how that, do you that, relax when you do take your foot off the gas? Um, my, with my girl, I would say. I mean, I might get my girl's over there shaking her head. Like, he, doesn't, <laughs> he, he never takes his foot off the gas. Like, you don't I, ever just have, like, a movie night or um, I mean, I suppose that sometimes we'll, we can watch uh, something on TV or something. But um, I, I find that I'm busy enough that it's... Uh, I mean, I don't know, and, and I like being busy. I do too, but sometimes in, it, it, it hits you. In my book, I uh, the, the last chapter is sort of the culmination of it all, and, and it starts with the question, in quotes, are you happy? Mm. And, and, and I acknowledge that for all the fucking countless times that I've been asked that question, am I happy, for countless years... It's just given me anxiety. It's just right. fucking. It's it's been, it's annoyed me. It's been. Fu- it's just made me uncomfortable because, like, like my my gut reaction when I hear that question, like I can scan my body, like, no, I'm not fucking happy. I can I can tell, mm. and and like it's it's not uh, like. In our society, it's just not okay to answer that because no, I'm not happy. Because it's like one thing, like yeah, what's up, man? How's it going? That's totally different from are you happy? Of course, you know, it's, it's a such a question. It's such a more invasive. It's a great question, question to ask though in the elevator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you happy? Right, it's right. Such uh-huh. an invasive question, and and uh, you know, I, I kind of like really uh, kind of get into it, and and. Uh, because it, it it bothered me for a long time, mm-hmm. and 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 so I just I kind of asked myself why does it bother me so much? And what I arrived at is that I I truly believe that to be happy is essentially the equivalent of to be content, and if you're content then by definition you don't need anything so you become fucking lazy mm. and that's what makes losers <laughs> so, so like I, what i arrive at is that like no i'm not fucking happy i don't i'm i'm, I'm a, a constant ball of stress and anxiety my default uh mentality is that everything's not okay yeah. that i'm not going to be okay and that i better fucking hurry up and and hustle and work to make it so that everything might be okay yeah and and that is just my my perpetual state and i would you know if i if i could actually have a choice I would not choose to be fucking happy. I choose the hustle. That's, you know, I, love I think that. you can have both. I, I get what you're saying, but I think on the other end of it, to be depressed is to be crippled. Like you, you, depression can be right. Crippled. Right. I'm not so, talking about depression. So you want something in the middle? About, I'm, I'm not talking about depression. I'm talking about like sort of anxiety. You know, sure. like str- the the feeling that it's a motor like, for you. It, it's a fire under my yeah. ass. You know, like I just feel like I'm not okay. Like uh, I'm just like ah, I got I got to fucking make shit happen and. I do not know how to turn that off. Like, yeah, uh, I'm similar. I, I, I wish that I could be like, okay, I've worked, and now I'm going to flip the switch, and yes. now I'm just going to chill. Same. But but last night was the first night I took off in forever, and I felt guilt. For yes, guilt. yes. <laughs> and, and I will say, I, there is a part of me that, like, obviously this is an insane thing to say, but, like, sometimes I look at, ign- uh, you know, people who are ignorant ignorance is bliss oh, right? sure. so I see someone on the street smiling I'm like look at this fucking dickhead you yeah, know yeah. He's an idiot. look at this moron smiling right. what are you happy about you know right. I'm like wow what a dumb observation well, but you know I see I mean, what you're saying I, I'm not too far off of that uh, you know when I submit that intelligence is a liability sure you know, like pe- dumb people are way happier. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Like if like, because if you think about it, like there's got to be some dumb, miserable people though. 
Yeah, uh, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But, but, uh, Our but. Our producer. Yeah. <laughs> you would imagine that, uh, intelligence affords wisdom, knowledge, mm. right? But, 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 but what is there to know? The history is a bunch of bad fucking news that's definitely going to repeat itself. The more you learn, the more fucking much of a bummer it is. Yeah. Mm. But I think we look at, not to get schmaltzy, but we look at happiness like it's this big state, like, like being in New York. I live in New York. But happiness comes and goes. It's not just this all the time, right. you know, For feeling. Sure. It's not something you're just sitting in. Right. It's like today I'm happy, or this hour I'm happy. The next hour I'm not. I mean, it, right. we act like you have to be happy all right, the time, right, right, and then right, we right. think by, hey, I'll go to Tijuana or I'll go to Bali and I'll be happy. But you're still there with your fucked up thoughts. Right. You got to make it happen. You got to make yourself happy. You got to practice gratitude i think that's yeah. a big thing it's yeah. not just about happy oh i'm not happy right. it's about what are you doing to become happy and what do you have in your life that you should be happy about that you're not right but yeah we just say happy like it's this yeah. general thing D don't worry about getting the things you want worry about wanting the things you have <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> yes exactly i like yeah. this way this is going man yeah this is no heavy. I, I i no i relate to that and mark and i talk about this a lot but like sometimes you're in a funk and you're like force yourself to go to the gym like yeah. i'm not saying that is the answer but it's there's stuff you can do to help you know right i i was feeling it this morning i was like i'm working out you know i feel a little better yeah sometimes the thing you want to do the least is actually the thing you should be doing yeah yeah, it's easy for to sure. pick up that cupcake. Now, um, so, like, <laughs> as, as my annoying homework, like, uh, I've, I've got this bit, and and I do talk about it in my book about how I used to try it and it would bomb. It's an unpopular uh, topic. All right. Um, the bit was, and I would just come out and say this: I uh, I have a theory. I might even say I have an unpopular theory. I think God hates us. Okay. Right, and it's like ooh, you know, like like that was abrasive. That kind of like, well, mm. like, and then so now follow me, okay? Here. I like it. F follow me. Um, we human beings are the only fucking organism that got fucked by the awareness, the hypothetical awareness, no less, that 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 we're gonna die. And what's fucked mm. up about that, we have but one instinct, which is to survive, and one guarantee, which is we won't. Yeah, you got that right. So, come on, this is a fucking, a fucked up, cruel prank on us. The one fucking thing that we care about not happening is the only thing that we know will happen. Inevitable. And as we barrel down this fucking dark and scary fucking path towards our inevitable demise, we wilt. We fucking <laughs> wilt. Our bodies deteriorate. They fail us. They wrinkle. They bruise. They wilt. This bit is going to struggle on Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I think they're going to see you, and they're like, "Holy shit, this is kind of cerebral this here." Is deep. This is, right. You know, I. I, I like think it. that is actually the popularity of Jackass is that you guys are death defying. You're doing these crazy stunts, and I think right. and we're also and living. So it's almost like you're saying, like, it's kind of hard to die, actually. Uh, perhaps. I mean, definitely, like, th this uh, this whole existential fucking crisis of the, you know, the, the human condition. Yep. And, like, oh, my God, this sucks. Like, uh, we're going to die, you know? Like, um, there, there are two things about that that, uh, like, fuck, man, it sucks we got to die. And so people, people address mortality in uh, three major ways that I identify. Number one is they turn to religion because the promise is that they're gonna go to heaven and everything's gonna be great, so it's totally okay that they're gonna die. Yeah, must be nice yeah. to no. think that. <laughs> yeah, the hence dumb people. Did we not happy. tell you this is a Scientology <laughs> podcast? <laughs> we'll, we'll get you, right. we'll get you. The, the second way people uh, you know, wrap their head around mortality is to reproduce. You know, oh, they, they feel yes. like, oh, you know, I might not be here, but the family jewels have done their job. My my uh, bloodline, my, my, my lifeline, the family name. Like I'm leaving my legacy and my children, and uh, I'm not into that either. 
you know, I got a vasectomy, you know, and filmed it for uh, a stunt. And, you know, with my girl, we just don't want to have kids. So yeah. then the third category is people uh, like the caveman scrawling the stick figures on the cave wall. It's like this fucking, I'm going to be gone, but that fucking, you know, like we leave our, shit behind. Yeah, which you know? is what we're doing with our act, exactly. our specials, our books. Exactly. And um, I, uh, what was very much, you know, like at the point when I really committed myself to this uh, pursuit of, um, you know, uh, fame and being a crazy stuntman, it was 1993. Mm -hmm. I had failed fucking miserably at the University of Miami. And because I couldn't bring myself to go to class. Yep. I, I couldn't help but get kicked out of the dorms. I upped and physically dropped That's, a, that's also a school where it, it's probably very tempting to party. Yeah, they're asking yeah. for it. Yeah, and and I, I didn't do well, and 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 I also knew uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that I could not keep a job. Like every job that I ever <laughs> had, every job I ever had, I failed at so bad, I got fired on like every denomination of days, right? Like from like one through seven, I have a job where I got fired on that day. <laughs> like I could not, I I couldn't. I couldn't get through school and I couldn't keep jobs. So I was just confronted with this realization that the likelihood was I was going to fail at life and die miserably young having failed. Yeah. And that made me mad. You know, it sure. made me mad. And I was like, the one thing I love is video cameras. The one thing I want to do is fucking be an attention whore with my video camera. I'm going to film stupid stunts and become a crazy famous stuntman. Yeah. And I didn't think I was going to have any success. I didn't think it was going to work out. I thought that what I was doing was just trying to film the craziest fucking shit ever and effectively, you know, fill my message into the bottle so that I could be discovered yeah. after I died having failed and maybe be like the Van Gogh of the home video camera. You yeah, know? Like, sure. And, and and the idea that I was going to fucking die having failed in life kind of pissed me off. And I think that that did inform my choice to be doing this like death to find, you know, I was mad at fucking death. I'm like, well, I'm going to fucking jump off this rooftop and you're going to think maybe I'm going to die because I'm fucking mad. Fuck Whoa. you, death. Oh, you cheated, you know? yeah. Yeah, cheating death, taunting death, lashing out at death. Like, that was very, very... Uh... I really think this is the popularity of Jackass. Like, I think I, you're right. I, I think people see that, and they're like... The way, like, people, like, we'll post, like, a heckler video sometimes, and people fucking love it, because I think it's like, well, I can't tell off my boss. So yeah. there's, like, some weird uh -huh. justice in this moment. Uh -huh. I think for you guys... It's the death definer. Like, well, I'm too scared to do that. Right. But I get to live vicariously through you doing that, and I get a thrill watching that. Yeah, it's the same with Charlie Sheen, who does, you know, blow and fucks <laughs> porn stars. You're at your, your office job going, wow, look at this guy. He's living life. And he came out the other end, and it's fun to watch. I mean, he got AIDS. but HIV. HIV, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But I think he was fucking your ex. Uh, <laughs> uh, but We'll get you one day, Sheen. Yeah, we love you, Sheen. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's fun to He's watch people. List guests on Go the pod that. Oh, we dear. want we want Charlie yeah. Sheen, but let me For throw sure. this at you because you, you, you want you want a fucked up Charlie Sheen story. Dude? Oh boy, absolutely. Um, now a word from our sponsor, Better Help. You have to take care of your mind, folks. We spend so much time taking care of our skin, our hair, our teeth, and so little care of the most important body part, the brain. How well you take care of your brain affects how you experience life. Investing time and energy in mental health is crucial to being happy. Eating right, working out, and getting plenty of sleep are a good start, but no substitution for talk therapy. BetterHelp makes online therapy accessible, convenient, and affordable. We love therapy. It's good for you. Don't let those bags pile up. Everybody's got shit in their life. Everybody's got drama. You got to make it work. You got to be healthy, and that's how you do it, is talking about it. That's how you get it out. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat therapy sessions. You can choose to not see anyone on camera, and it's much more affordable than in person. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. We Might Be Drunk listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash drunk. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash drunk. Get on it. Phew! Fume is the safe way to quit smoking. Fume's 100% Canadian maple handcrafted inhaler is made to replace the hand-to-mouth habit. Simply insert their non-addictive flavored cores. Uh, Fume cores come in dozens of flavors like peppermint, 
lemon berry bliss. Ooh. Yeah, the flavors are good. They taste nice. I love the little pipe inhaler thing. It's so cool. Fun to suck on, fun to put in your mouth. There's no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine to worry about. Even if you're not trying to quit smoking, Fumes Core can help with relaxation, energy, and more. Whether you're a smoker or an ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with Fume. And we're here to make it easier. Head to fume.com slash drunk. Use promo code drunk to save 10% off your whole order. Save money by eliminating cigarettes and save on your initial purchase of Fume. That's 10% off your entire order at B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash drunk and use code drunk. Hey, hey, folks, the summer months are here. Time to stay fueled and hydrated. Making hydration a priority helps us feel healthier in our everyday lives. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV products taste great with 10 refreshing flavors. Concord grape, lemon lime, tropical punch. My favorite flavor is pina colada. If you like pina coladas, use Liquid IV first thing in the morning uh, before a workout, when you feel run down, after a long night of boozing, and just to manage daily hydration. The single-serve packaging helps keeps you hydrated while on the go. I put one in my uh, water every morning. I just, why the hell not? Well, hungover, not hungover, I do it. B3, B5, B6, B12, vitamin C. It's in my travel bag for sure. Gotta have it. We have it at the studio. We like to drink heavily. As you know, it's in the title. It's got more, three times more electrolytes than a traditional sports drink. Liquid IV's got no gluten, dairy, or soy. And it's uh, designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. Tell them how to get it, Sammy. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DRUNK at checkout. That's 15% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code DRUNK at liquidiv.com. Yeehaw! I uh, was, I like to think famously on the Charlie Sheen roast, uh, the Comedy Central roast of Charlie Sheen. Yeah. And um, I, uh, w- that, like, he had this little party before the taping of the roast to uh, get everybody, to, like, over to his house, everybody meet each other and kind of hang out to sort of maybe establish a rapport before we tape the show. Very cool of him. Mm. <clears throat> We're we're uh, at his house and he kind of he pulls me aside and he's like, "Steve, oh man." And, and mind you, this was like right at the kind of uh, the the end of the Tiger Blood Trail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and he he pulls me aside. He says, "Man, Steve, oh dude, fucking you and me. When we go down, we're not fucking around. When we, <laughs> you know, like when we go down, we go down in flames, like fucking big time, like yeah. serious, like we're, you know." And uh, and I felt like that 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 was a particularly bonding moment. Oh, of course. We uh we 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 taped the 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 roast with you know, like it, it was great. And then when the roast aired, when the roast aired, we uh were invited back over to Charlie Sheen's house for. The, the viewing party. The, the viewing viewing party. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. And it was, um, I think that it was by design that they premiered that Charlie Sheen roast uh, immediately, I think different networks, but immediately following the very first episode of Two and a Half Men to feature Charlie Sheen and not... I started to feature Ashton, Ashton Kutcher and not Charlie Sheen. Whoa. And, of course, his relationship with the Two and a Half Men production was frayed. Of course. And, and he was absolutely oblivious to how they were going to handle the, uh, the the killing of his character and the introduction. of And, and I was in i mean this was the half an hour before i was there yeah yeah and I, and, and I was in his living room so you room. watched the episode with him i watched the episode with him in his living room with him and i saw his reaction to what? to realizing and what they did with his character there was it was like his character had died and like here was the, an urn with all the ashes uh, and then <laughs> somebody like jumbles the urn and it flies up in the air and there's a cloud of uh, of the ashes coming out of the urn and as the cloud dissipates Ashton Kutcher, uh, Ashton. you know, like 
Yeah, like the, the the cloud dissipates and and then to reveal Ashton Kutcher behind the ashes. Whoa! And, and he was like very subtle. And and, 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 uh, and 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 Charlie says, "I got to give it to him. That was good." <laughs> and, 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 and a little later in the night, a little later in the night, he sounds like a fun hang. He do totally, totally. A little later in the night, I, uh, I I'm, I'm talking to Jeffrey Ross, and I just it, it just strikes me. I say I say to him, I go, dude. I think we might actually be in the world's most expensive crack house. <laughs> <laughs> What's this place like? The most expensive crack house on earth. And, and I, I went running over to Charlie and uh, t- took a photo with him. I was like, oh, dude, here's a selfie. And I'm like, take, take this selfie. I still had my black eye from running into Mike Tyson's fist. <laughs> and um, Charlie just looked like shit in that photo. Yeah. Like, uh, we both looked like shit in that photo, but I was just so excited. I said, Charlie, can I tweet this photo? Yeah. With like uh, the, the text that says, I think I'm in the most expensive crack house on earth. And he goes, hilarious, go for it, totally, man, I love it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and, uh, and, and and it was that that was not a hit with his management, and and then the next morning I was performing. Uh, I like that weekend I was at the like uh, Ontario Improv or the Brea Improv, one of those like mm-hmm. you know like one of those comedy clubs, and I was at the the news to to um, promote it, and and some news person that like. Uh, at, pulls me aside like oh I've got this side thing here I'm gonna film you on my cell phone and they asked like is, is Charlie sober mm. uh oh and I was like nah, I don't think so and then later that day I got a call from his manager saying what the fuck you're fucking saying Charlie's not sober oh boy like the fuck we we had your back we were down with you he was he fucking unleashed like a tirade oh wow i've heard I the mean, tiger blood has caffeine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean so in any case like uh i too can can effectively i think just have charlie sheen as a bucket list guest for the rest of my life yeah because uh, i got the sense that uh i don't know i mean maybe i'm cool with him like Maybe I'm like he doesn't. I, I didn't. I didn't mean no. to, to to do any harm. That's manager bullshit. Uh, yeah, I like Charlie's. To think so. He okayed the picture it. too. He okayed the yeah. picture. He thought it was fun. Well, you said great. crack house. I said crack yeah. house. What's, yeah. Give me what's the rundown? What's this place look like? Is it great? Oh, dude, it was palatial. Yeah. Oh, it was wow. the most fucking obnoxiously palatial fucking. God, place give me, ever. give me like what? What are the rooms like? Ah. Uh, Just massive. I mean, I'm just saying, to basic like when when you think of a palatial, massive mansion, I mean, it's exactly what you would picture it to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anything, though, like the gated community that he lived in was, uh, I, it did kind of feel a little bit like all the houses looked very similar. Mm. I'm not gonna say cookie cutter. All right, but it had a similar vibe to, all to it. Got it. Well, let me just go back to the the death thing because you you, okay. you got something in my head here. It's horrible. It's inevitable. We're all going to die. And we know we're going to die, which is a bummer, which means God hates right. us. But isn't it better to know? Because now we can live, damn it. You know, right. some mongoose is just like trying to survive, trying to get a, a meal, trying to survive and, right. and live and get a hut. But we can do all this extra shit because we know there's an ending. I think you're onto something there. And I don't know if this falls into the category of comedy, but there's absolutely a, a very powerful message in in uh, pointing out that that people go through their fucking life with blinders on, just like la oh, la yeah. la la. They don't want to think about. It. Don't remind me of my mortality. I don't want yes. to like, la 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 la. They do everything they can to not think about it. When in fact, probably the 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 way to have the most fulfilling and meaningful life is to think about it every day. Agreed. And to really be deliberate about uh-huh. living every day, knowing about like like really focusing on the finite nature of our existence. Here. Here, here. But we yeah. talk about like you know ignorance is bliss before, and that dog's wagging its tail because it doesn't know. Yeah, that's true. If that yeah. dog, you don't see a lot of goth dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> They're usually pretty like you know upbeat. That's true. Yeah, right. And they can eat their own ass, or yeah, they can they, blow they... themselves. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> can you blow yourself? I cannot. Oh, that's shocking. I, I cannot. 
Seems uh, like something you'd have be right up your alley. And uh, if my damn dick was any gotta, bigger, gotta like I, I would have had a chance. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I've tried too. I, I pulled a muscle. Um, but yeah, boy, this is deep. Who knew we, we really yeah. tackled some shit? This is great. Yeah. Tackled some. How, shit. How's that bit doing? Is it working? Um, the God hates I, us. I haven't. Um, I haven't worked on it in a long time, but I am super committed to my next hour really uh, serving to explore this, you know, it's kind yeah. of the premise of my next hour because my next hour is going to be... Uh, well, Sam has been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. My next hour will be an exploration of uh, my <laughs> my experience with confronting middle age. Oh, nice. There you and go. And the, the breakdown of the physical body that I've relied on for my livelihood. Well, you got hair, you got teeth, yeah. you're thin. I mean, you're you're sober, you're in a good place. Well, thanks, Physically. Man. Thanks. That's, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang on to that. Yeah, hell yeah. And I'm this... going to clutch to that for dear life. And you got a, uh, I, I, I assume, anxiety dog, because you're not blind. Right. Uh, I mean, it's she's a, a service dog. Service dog, but what's the service? Well, she's... Um, Mobility assist. Oh, nice. Yeah, because I'm not fucking going anywhere without her, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, point. Yeah, don't expect me to be very mobile without her. She is, <laughs> <laughs> I need a hangover dog. Just a dog to like, help me out when I'm hungover. Like, all right, we're going to get you to the gym, you piece of shit. The yeah, dog can't. Uh, it said the N-word years ago, and now it's not allowed to speak. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're having too much fun here. Did I, did I tell you, honey, how fucking great this guy is? Oh, come on. We go way back. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing else in life except for jokes. So It's good, man. It's yeah. good. And we get to tell them you know, a microphone to hundreds of people. We got it made. Yeah, yeah, hundreds of people. And yet we still get sad. Yep. But that's that's the brain. It, it is. It's, uh, it's very uh, relative. You know, um, they say that... So, was it Einstein? Was it hmm. some fucking philosopher? I said that that money has never made a man happy. Hmm. That in fact, quite the opposite. What money does is it creates a void, where an insatiable void. More money, more problems. Yeah. Well, like the the more money, you know, like. That uh, <laughs> I know it's classic. Man, mark, talk about marking your territory. Uh, <laughs> All right, they, um, there you go, right here, perfect. They uh, they they did some survey. I heard about they they surveyed like people with over 10 million bucks uh, and maybe people of all kinds of, uh, of um, financial status mm -hmm. and they found that the more money people have the more financially insecure interesting feel. interesting it's that, kind of that, like that, that people with over 10 million dollars in their bank account so Elon Musk must be freaking yeah. out all the time <laughs> freaking or, out, he's probably yeah. thinking about it I mean, yeah think about because you get knocked out of that like top five right and you're probably like fuck right. yeah I'm out I'm on the way out yeah. right and, and 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 I think that there there's a saying that really illustrates that which which kind of knocked me on my ass which is that a man who has nothing doesn't have to worry about anything except his next meal Mm. But the man who has everything has to worry about his last meal. Ooh. Is that fucked up? That's heavy. Still leaning toward the billionaire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to choose. Uh, here's one that fucked Still, me up. Yeah. Every man has two lives, but his second life starts when he realizes he only has one. Ooh. I might have fucked that up. No, that's, I think that makes sense. Okay. Like, he, wow. once you accept your mortality... Yeah, you going, can. You're really living. Exactly. This is. A, I did not realize we'd be doing so much death talk. I episode. know. This is heavy. heavy. It's great. It's nice. Yeah. It's good no, to get it, it out. Because everybody thinks it's some magic pill you can just take and it'll all work out. But you got to work at it. You got to. Right. Like somebody yeah. once said, like, "Oh, I want to learn another language, but it's so much work, and I want to get buff, but it's I got to go to the gym. I want it to be easy, but it should be hard because right. that's the fun part, like yeah. earning it." Very yeah. little of supreme value is uh, easy to accomplish. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Mark asked me, um, or he just said, so going back to the death thing, he asked Sorry. me, how'd, that, how'd the bit go? You know, how's it been going? And um, candidly, I've not really worked on the, you know, the 
existential crisis bit about death in some time, but I'm very much committed to my next hour that I put together really being uh, an exploration of my experience with confronting middle age. Mm -hmm. The breaking down of the body that I rely on for my livelihood. Like the, the fucking, you know, it's not like middle age is a motherfucker no matter who you oh, are. Death yeah. sucks for all people. Yeah. But for Steve-O, <laughs> it's like, ec it's extra fucked up, you know? Of course. And, um, this is going to be rough at 78. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I really do need to, to, to work on this bit and get it somewhere. Yeah. And then, like, with, with, with what I do with my comedy, it's, it's multimedia. Like, right now I'm on the bucket list tour, and each item on the list is a bit in the show, and at the end... After the bit, oh. I screen the footage of the culmination of the bit. Oh, that's great. So I pay off every bit with an actual video of the fucked up thing I did that I just told you the hilarious story about. Right. Oh, that's interesting. That's great. <clears throat> and so I plan to do the same thing with my next tour and kind of going down like the list of the different like major concerns that uh, middle age has confronted me with. Um, Impotence? <laughs> no, I, I, I've been fortunate that, that uh, imp impotence isn't always a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no one's perfect. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Um, but, like, the, the one thing... Um, I got fucking man titties, dude. This is the middle age deal. You guys, yeah, you know, I don't see it, dude. There's dimples, dude. Really? No. I got, I got dim I'm, I'm developing fucking man titties, dude. She like dimples. Oh, I'm get here. out of here. I got fucking, dude, I'm sorry, man, but I have fucking under boob and it's driving me nuts. Oh. And, and, and my, uh, my, my feelings about this, just because I want to raise the bar for crazy. I want to, like, the, the God that fucking fucked me. And now has has relegated me to fucking walking around with man tits. Uh, yeah. I'm lashing crazy. out at that god and getting breast augmentation surgery. Hell yeah! Yeah, that's gonna be one of my things. One of my I'm getting fucking double D tits. I'm sure she loves this. She's back and forth with it. <laughs> All right. I mean, they're fun, but she's your no, own. And this is like half a transition. Yeah, you're yeah. going like, like I'm just gonna do the tits. That, 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 was with my, that was my dad, like ever the homophobe. He said, and, and uh, how long are you gonna wait until you do the bottom half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just gonna be meatloaf in Fight Club. That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much fun. <clears throat> There's so much uh, fun stuff to do with that. In my view, sure. Like yeah. there's so many great bits to. You could clean up on OnlyFans. Yeah, <laughs> do you tits. I'd pay for that. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, I consulted with the. <clears throat> The person I believe is the world's most famous plastic surgeon mm. Mm. of botched fame, oh. Dr. Terry Dubrow. Okay. He says, don't keep him in for more than three months, and then the stretching will be manageable. He can really put me back together. Okay. So, uh... Three months. You'll be by for three months. Yeah. They, they, my, my, my girl, her name is Lux. She says, I will be in Europe for three months. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time to take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're really going to do this? Yeah, dude. I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to do this. Well, now you got your closer for the new hour. Yeah. Well, that's not the closer. Oh, really? <laughs> that's, that's, wow. Yeah. That's definitely not the closer. But, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's everything about what I'm seeking to do. Oh, well, look at that. We, have, so we were donated some implants, so that's going to be your future. Yeah, yeah, dude, epic. Yeah, why not? Everything about what I'm, I'm, I'm seeking to do with the next hour is challenging. Yeah. I love it. Uh, challenging. <laughs> the, the confronting mortality, like alienating. Um, I love you doing heady material with just big cans on stage. <laughs> You're like, what's up with God? <laughs> tits. I think that I will have been restored to normal yeah. uh, before the before actually going on the road. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, part of me thinks, dude, don't fucking half-ass it, you little bitch. You know, keep the tits for the whole tour. Yeah. But uh, my, my girl doesn't want to hear that. Are you going D? Double D is what Ooh, I like. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Terry Dubrow said I can do D or double D. Oh Damn. my lord! There's a there there's a saving grace of middle age that uh, my man titties are fucking malleable and and uh, <laughs> I have potential. What about a dick implant? Not a dick implant. I'm getting a dick tattoo that. on my forehead. The what? No. Yeah. 
No, don't do that. Yeah. You're gonna do it. Gonna... I, I love that that bothers you more. My girl has absolutely no problem with the dick tattoo on really? her forehead. Really? Yeah. Because you're still a man. You see, because back to my uh, my my uh, formulaic approach to this, you know, everything needs to be motivated. And in my view, the wrinkles that are accumulating around my eyes and on my face in general are not fucking okay. But once I get a big dick tattooed on my forehead, that's all anybody's going to be able to see. So, uh, so I will uh, be young again. <laughs> most of the housewives would do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the Botox. You go full dog. Yeah. Jeez, the dick. But that that's unremovable. Eh? No, it is. That laser, laser tattoo removal. And it's counterintuitive, but the one color of tattoo ink which comes out most easily and completely is black oh ah, so you have a black, black dick. dick yeah yeah <laughs> finally she'll be satisfied <laughs> <laughs> now she's gonna really want to sit on your face <laughs> yeah you're in an interracial relationship how about these guys honey they're fucking great fantastic yeah, dude. We can't take a compliment. Now, now, I want you guys to know that as annoying as it was having homework for this podcast, I did do it. Oh, all right. Well, let's... Really? What do you I got? I it. Well, I mean, uh, like, we, 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 we throw, I've thrown out more bits. You got that, a bit out it there. it makes sense to throw out, but... Appreciate uh, but, uh, that. I, I'm the kind of guy who, who can actually... Um, cough up his ideas because nobody's fucking taking my ideas no yeah, no, no, no. no. I, I, I can comfortably put it out there into the ether and know that yeah. nobody's gonna steal it I don't know you and Maria Bamford you know, <laughs> no but so you got all those joke thieves out there I feel pretty uh yeah. immune you think it's dead <laughs> Carlos Mencia is like he's at the surgery right now <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a peeve, a pet peeve, or anything uh, that bugs you? You, you know, uh, the, the the one thing that really came to mind is when uh, I, I see it fucking so often, dude. Is when someone says, I'm, "I was so glad to be a part of it," ah. but a part is one word. Oh, how about a that? part of something? Yeah, a part. If, if it's you a different are, meaning, if right? You, yeah, if it's not only a different meaning, it's the exact fucking opposite yeah. meaning. Yeah. A part weird? of it. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I got to be a part of it. When they're saying a part is one word, meaning ah. not a part. Whoa, you're blown. Because a part, when the words are together, the letters are together. It means it means separate, far away, yeah. but separate, apart. But, but, but if you make a, two words out of it, it is, it is a part. So it's part, completely fucking opposite. I feel like just it irks the shit out of me. Yeah. When it, when I see that, like, no, you are not a you are not a part of it. <laughs> fucking asshole. We love you being a part of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Yeah. <laughs> when you get the tits, you guys will be a part. <laughs> Man, that's a good one. A part. That's good apartheid it's it's yeah it's just a, a, a silly fucking little thing but it but it, it irks the fuck out of me well the english language is a real cunt like yeah. <laughs> imagine trying to learn the english language late in life you know it's like we have we have a thing called a dress shirt you yeah. know we say he's pretty ugly i mean it's so yeah. many fucked up twisted yeah. ling right. linguistics in, in english he's pretty ugly What's wrong with the dress shirt? Well, it's a dress shirt, but it's a shirt. Ah, uh, so not it's a confusing. Dress. Maybe if you're a foreigner, you're like, I mean, Wait, yeah, dress, man, shirt. get dressed. Yeah, what the fuck get are you dressed. doing? You get dressed. Yeah, and then you dress a sandwich. Yeah, dude. That's true. I mean, we're turning into Seinfeld here. I, I, but, uh... I have a pee for you guys. Oh, please. Good friend of mine, one of my best friends. He will do this a lot. He'll just say. I don't know why it bugs me so much, but it'll say, I had a great time uh, giggling with you last night. Like, oh. Giggling? What the fuck are you? T I hate that. Oh. that, what, that are you, what are you, an Asian teenage girl? What the hell? That's, that sounds like a very homophobic peeve. <laughs> really? <laughs> giggling? No, I don't think it's a He's a straight guy. It's not gay. Okay. It's more childlike. It's childlike. Right, 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 right. Weird. Giggling. giggling. I'm like, what are we, children? Yeah, giggling. Hee hee. I, I have the same thing when a guy will write back, hee hee. How about a ha ha? You give me a hee hee. <laughs> oh wow! H e h e. Hee hee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Giggling just sounds like we're like, what were we doing last night? Yeah, we had, yeah. A, real, we had a real good giggle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, a, real, a real belly giggle. Yeah, I picked you guys holding each other when you're giggling yeah. together. Get in here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Kill a giggle. <laughs> it was one fine giggle, dude. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. You keep joking, I'll bring the giggles. Yeah. I'll see you next week. <laughs> now, now, I recently put a, a video together of 10 things that really piss me off. Oh. Hit us, dude. Uh, and um, 
fucking urinals was big on the list. Mm. I mean, what the fuck, dude? Like, well, you just want a regular toilet? I mean, just I, I sit down to pee. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I sit down to pee because all fucking standing up to pee is is just an exercise and pissing all over the fucking place. Yeah. You're like, I mean, dude, they, like it's so absurd that they actually put like special mats for collecting piss on the floor in front of the urinal. Right. Because they know. They, they know. know. They know that this is just gonna. This is just a fucking battle zone of fucking. Yeah, I wear these pants. They're very nice. But look, one one inch of liquid, and you got mouse could jizz on these, and you would see it. And yeah. I was at the urinal yesterday, and I was all. I had the back spray, yeah. and it was like I had to sit down and do this shit for a half an hour while it dried because <laughs> the back splash was so bad. But right. with jeans, you don't really notice it. But with these yeah. pants, so like how, about, how about this? Yeah. I drip. How about this? When when women become irate because you left the seat up oh my god okay like think about this no good deed the, the guy the guy that these women are getting mad at had the forethought the courtesy the decency to not piss on that fucking seat right. he lifted the seat so as to not piss on it and he left it up as a sign of that courtesy and that respect right whereas Whereas the other guy never fucking put it up in the first place, pissed all over it, and the lady's like, oh, what a gentleman. Right. I don't think they say what a gentleman if it's covered in piss. Uh, right, say right, right. Maybe, maybe he fucking uh, did a slapdash job of wiping it off so it's yeah. not visible, but it's That's covered in his Dried piss. Dried up piss, yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point. <laughs> I do the uh, foot, I pee on the seat, and then I use a sock. <laughs> that's my move. I don't know if you guys right. do that. So, so the, the whole, like, standing up to, standing up to piss thing, like, uh, I especially because when I get when I'm on the airplane I, I take off my shoes I would rather have my shoes off and then I go to the bathroom and and the the flight attendants are, are disgusted by me they're like oh my god you're going into the bathroom right. like barefoot or in your socks like, you should be like so have you not fun. seen jackass <laughs> right. have you not seen the shit I've done <laughs> right <laughs> Going in there, it's so disgusting. I'm like, well, how about this? Like, I personally, out of respect, I pee sitting down because I don't want to be one of these guys pissing all over everything. Uh -huh. I go into the bathroom barefoot, and that's nothing compared to when I sit down on the toilet. I'm sitting in some fucking asshole's piss. You, you got know, that that's right. a lot more disgusting than what's going on with my feet. Flight pissing is a real peeve of mine because I'm first off, I'm tall. I I have to sit down. Yeah, on those really? little planes, oh my god! I'm dude on the on those little planes. I can't. My neck's already fucked up. I can't. I can't stand Whoa. upright. What's wrong with your neck? I just have some disc damage. Degenerative disc disease. Yeah. Me too. Whoa, Sucks, right? Yeah. yeah, man. All right. I, you know it's fun. I used to get. I went to a basketball camp when I was 17, and all the black kids called me Steve O. Oh, I had wow. a shorter haircut. Cool, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were like, Steve-O. Huh. I, I consider my... you better looking than me. Oh, I, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know about yeah. that, but. Yeah, well, I, I do. It's funny. He went to camp and they called him Jew Face. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that fucking pisses me off, and it pisses me off yeah. in a serious way, is cemeteries. Oh. Think about this, okay? When you bury a dead human being. Yeah. What you have done is you have taken a plot of land and rendered that piece of land utterly fucking useless for feeding people, for sheltering people. Like you've just you've just fucking completely disqualified that land for being of any use and on top of that you've made you've now made that land creepy. Oh, that's great. Well, George and, Carlin and, has a whole bit about this, but I go I go to my grandparents' grave sometimes. I'm like, this could have been a fucking Walgreens. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, spooky and, is and, interesting and, too. And, spooky. When, and 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 the the whole life cycle, the the the, the nature of, of of life, everything changes. Right. Like, yeah. You've you've done that to this land fucking forever. Ah. And so so like you know generations go by generations go by and then now like it, like all the world is a fucking cemetery now it's true and I mean, it goes on and on forever it's just never like you're stunting growth yeah in, in a way no, you're not stunting growth you're you're fucking like ruining Land, useful yeah, yeah. land. Yeah, you're, you're just disqualifying land. Right. Really. Although right. if you live near a cemetery, that's nice. You're in a quiet neighborhood. That's true. That is kind of nice. That's true. Yeah. In New Orleans, cemeteries are like a big deal. People walk through them. There's like a tourist thing. Yeah. But during Katrina, 
a lot of the graves rose up. Yeah. Which is like horror movie shit, you yeah. know? And so a lot of the, we have mausoleums because of our flooding is so bad. Right. Yeah. I just think it's fucking stupid. Now, yeah. the solution to this, it's pretty cool. All two, right. I think two and a half men nailed it, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> right. For them. Yeah. Cremation. Yeah. I think cremation's solid. Yeah. But they also have um, what's called a, I think it's called a tree pod, where it's like the, you can fit the fucking body of your loved one in like a fetal position in this egg-shaped pod which you do bury in the ground and it turns into a tree whoa that's way better way better well wow, i think al lubell used to have a bit like why do we bury ourselves lying down as opposed to standing it would take up less space right which i thought was an right. interesting How about that yeah observation good a good angle yeah it's just fucking stupid it'd be funny if the tree came out looking like like us like you're a palm tree you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'd be like a shitty bush <laughs> 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 that's a dumb, dumb joke. Oh, do we have the tree pod here? <laughs> oh, tree pod that. burial. That's ninety nine really... bucks. Plant a tree. I'm doing this. Yeah. Fucking All right. Ninety nine bucks. Funeral, How about too. that? Yeah. yeah. Super cheap funeral, dude. How annoying is it? The fucking. Uh... All these GoFundMe's for fucking funeral costs. I know. The Caskets crazy. are so expensive. Yeah. Crazy. Then open casket is such a weird tradition. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the queen, they lined up, dude. Did, yeah. Did you see the, the image of the body in the fetal position fucking in the pod? It's, I mean, it's very symbolic. It's like kind of how you come into the world in fetal position, right? Exactly. And then you... And you go out. Yeah. There's a... Uh, there you go. Oh, look at that. There you Whoa. go. That's look heavy. That. Yeah, look we should that. be doing this. This the is a good idea. Potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're a lot of people at morgues who are like, look, he's sucking his dick. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. It's like he's in a ball bag and he's going to come out as a tree. Yeah. A yep. kumquat. All yeah. right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's did we cover all of my homework? I got the peeves. You I crushed it, bed. man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, things that we recommend. Oh, you're you're, on fire, we weren't going to push for it, yeah, but we're, we're honored. Okay. Things that we recommend. Besides fake tits. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I cannot fucking. I was gonna. Well, I was gonna say that we're all podcasters here, so let's uh, take this opportunity to make ourselves some money. Let's talk about Tushy, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I absolutely do recommend. Do you use it? I fucking use it. Yeah. Yes, I you, use you have tushy. it on there. I have it, but my I live. Do you in guys promote it and not connect. use it? I, I, are they we were, sponsored? I think we gave, they gave us one, maybe. Yeah. But I, Dad, you'd, my be crazy won't, not to, you'd be crazy work. not to use it. I should use I would love to have a bidet. My yeah. asshole is a graveyard of, yeah. of yeah. shit. Yeah. I mean, Crustaceans dude, on that butthole. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I really am. A, I cannot recommend the use of a bidet enough. You know, all kidding aside, like I love to promote Tushy. Now, here's what a maniac I am on my podcast. When I'm promoting Tushy, I out loud into a microphone identify them as my favorite sponsor which is actually saying all the rest of the sponsors of my podcast can go fucking suck a fart out of my asshole because I'm giving preferential favor to Tushy All right, and I can't help it because I'm an honest guy I hear you. I fucking love Tushy. Everybody should be doing it. We have stuff in our butt cracks all day long that we don't know about. It's out of sight, out of mind but it's better to get that cleaned up I'm definitely pro bidet. I, I just haven't set it up. But. Now, in 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 lieu of uh, now, I, I, I will I will I will British <laughs> call it toilet. I will I will say something uh, <laughs> something somewhat critical, which is that Tushy also sells a. Uh, it's I think it's called Tushy on the go, and it's like a, a collapsible squeeze water Whoa. bottle. And it, 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 you uh, flip up the nozzle, and you're supposed to like sort of reach between your legs and like squeeze the water bottle and spray. I don't find that super effective. Nah, nah. <clears throat> and uh, thank yeah, God they don't go. make water picks. And in <laughs> <laughs> that would be awkward. And uh, in lieu of actually having the proper bidet set up on the toilet, like I swear by fucking flushable wet wipes oh people love these. i use those next oh, month you do? yeah next month i will uh, be receiving the first shipment of ten thousand fifty packs of what steve-o's butt wipes for your butthole oh I'm gonna what uh what, how are your butt wipes different than like a standard one like the dude wipes 
Yeah. Your well, for thought? starters, dude wipes is very misogynistic. Um, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, dude, I'm not alienating anybody, dude. Women have buttholes too. I love it. Bro. Yeah. War. You're starting some beef here. Yeah, starting some beef. Is, are they scented or no? Uh, my mine are not scented, but God, do they feel great. I can't wait. To I can't. Wipe I, you my know ass. what? I'm going to get these, dude. I, I, and yeah. I have to say, public apology. My ex would swear by these, and I was always like, ugh. And then we broke up, and I started using them, and she was right. <laughs> I mean, dude, <laughs> dry great. toilet paper does not do the trick, no. man. It does not do the trick. And, and like, invariably, like an hour later, I got to go find a bathroom and wipe my ass again, and there's fucking shit on the toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Not cool, man. I hate it. It's true. Yeah. If a girl shat on your chest, you wouldn't use a dry. Dry rag. You right. use a wet rag. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> right. Well, I, that would never. I'm too hairy for that to even be a possibility. Oh, it's like peanut butter in a carpet. I mean, come on. Look at that. A woman. Oh yeah. yeah. That's true. What, that, what, what wouldn't be? This is the most cleavage we've shown on a podcast between me and Steve over here. What, what, what wouldn't be a possibility with the hairy chest? Oh my God. I poop? mean, I could shit on there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Could you get it off? Anybody could. Anybody could shit on. On there what, what's, what's the but problem but getting it off oh, getting Thru, it off throughout, yeah, throughout all yeah with dry toilet paper you got a problem <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. yeah. <laughs> yeah but not with steve-o's butt wipes yes butt wipes, butt wipes for your butthole it's yeah. it's like a whole kind of a line that i'm, I'm going i've got hot sauce for your butthole oh. butt wipes for your butthole yeah yeah yes. it's all under my company name i've got a special company called whole foods <laughs> I love this for you. Yeah. Great. Whole Foods, but without the W. I love it. I was thinking if, ands, or buts. <laughs> <laughs> but this yeah. is great. All right, we got a wreck. We got a pee. We got a bit. Steve-O, you killed it. You killed it, man. Hey, it man, was, you uh, know, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a neurotic homework doer. I love it. A hard kick in the nuts. You, where do you, any bookstore, yeah, anywhere Amazon? Anywhere books are sold. Yeah, anywhere, anywhere books, books are, sold. are sold. A hard Beautiful. kick in the nuts. I mean, it sounds awesome. Get so. the hot sauce, it's, too. It's, like it's, uh, it, it is, it is, uh, Shocking what I fucking admit in that book. I will say that. Oh, that's a good tease. I can't get, wait. Get book, yeah, this folks. looks awesome. Yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, I enjoy you guys. You're the I'm, man. Me too, uh, man. Thank you. And that, that's a high compliment because on my first date with with my girl, who's now my fiance, that I said I enjoy you. Whoa. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. It. So oh, maybe we'll fuck. You we got some tour dates. <laughs> you got some tour dates coming up. Oh yeah, where are you gonna be, Steve-O? These, these, these next dates, I don't know how soon you guys are getting this up. Yeah, I don't either. Probably late go. October. There you go. Okay. A lot of them Canada. We're talking to you. Hell yeah. Got a big run going through Eastern. No, sorry, Western Canada. Okay. What's the site name? What do you? Ah, uh, oh, it's just Steve-O, man. Oh, perfect. Steve-O.com. Steve-O.com. Check it out for dates. Go see him on the road. He's working on his new new hour. I, I won't be working on my new hour. This is the bucket list tour. Oh, sorry. This is the bucket list tour. This is where you're going to see. Uh, you're all over. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm, uh, you're going hard. Ooh, New York Town Hall. That's that's a great Classic. Venue. I'm touring my fucking living dick off. Yeah. Go see those tits, folks. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Thank you guys Thank so much. You, Thank sir. you, sir. Butt wipes. Wow, what an episode with Steve O. He oh, was yeah. such a great guest. Uh, coming up. Killer. Uh, I guess it's coming out late October, right? So I'll be in New Jersey at the Stress Factory, OKC, right after Norman's wedding. Uh, Springfield, Missouri, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, Tacoma, Spokane. Big tour coming in January. Ooh. I'm fucking coming everywhere, so get ready for that announcement, too, if, it's uh, not, if I haven't made it already. Come all over me. <laughs> I think that's Segura's tour. I'm coming everywhere. That's a great, great title. That's the hard thing is coming up with a tour. What's your tour called? All over the road. That's good. You know, I'm all over the road. I'm all, it's got a double meaning. Yeah, double uh, meaning's big for that stuff. Yeah, huge. But coming everywhere is just so silly. It's great. Uh, I'm I'm all over the road. I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm in Minneapolis. I'm in Seattle, Portland, uh, Seattle again, Vancouver, Houston. New Orleans, Boston, New Haven, uh, Philadelphia, Honolulu, Nashville, Miami, you name it, all kinds of fun stuff. It's going to be a it's going to be a hell of a year. Uh, new hours cooking and uh, yeah, get on the Patreon, get a mug, get a shirt, get See a See Mark now when he's cooking that hour, it's going to be killer and uh Get that Bodega Cat Whiskey at BodegaCatWhiskey.com. Oh, yeah. Watch my Netflix special, please. Yes. Uh, you know, we'll see get... us on the road. 
Yeah, we got tons of great guests cooking. We got hours on YouTube. We we got a lot of content out there for you folks. And we love you. We'll see you next time at the bar. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of fever, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like the cops coming. And naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans. This woman doesn't look like I 